When it comes to professional wrestling, sometimes terms like legend, icon, all-time great, one of the greatest, gets thrown out there way, way, way too liberally. Far too many wrestlers over the years have received that moniker, and very few of them have actually merited and earned it. However, I do feel that it is safe to say that when it comes to wrestlers that deserve merit the moniker of a legend, icon, all-time great, that Terry Funk is one of them dudes. Terry Funk is one of the biggest wrestling stars of all times. That's not hyperbole to say, right? Like when you think about longevity, ability to evolve, when you think about what he was able to do all over the world, what he meant to professional wrestling, his long-term impact, he is one of the biggest stars in wrestling history. And in the world of professional wrestling today, there's one less, there's one more star burning in the sky because Terry Funk has passed away at the age of 79. And I think this is one of these things as professional wrestling fans, we are certainly used to hearing about wrestlers passing for a variety of different reasons. Some feel very untimely, others not so much. You know, it's hard to say that Terry Funk didn't live a full life living to 79, considering all that he put his body through in his professional wrestling career. Like the fact that he made it to 79 is probably feels like a damn miracle, doesn't it? I mean, it really does. Like he was somebody, like, he put his body through it for decades. And that doesn't mean that it makes it any less sad because you, you, you knew, known, I think, most people could sense, like, you would see some people talking about keep Terry Funk in your thoughts and prayers and your hearts and, you know, rooting for Terry Funk or, you know, Terry Funk rules. You see some of those kind of random things. You saw a while back, you know, Terry Funk did a quick video uh, talking about he loved his fans, but, like, please stop sending him stuff. He's tired, he's old, and he doesn't want to be bothered anymore. Like, kind of the thing that you know, like, hey, the end is pretty close at hand here, right? Um, so, my best thoughts are with his family, you know, because it's not easy even if you prepare for it, right? But Terry Funk, like, what's fascinating about him is that if you grew up watching wrestling in the 60s or 70s, you might have one set of memories associated with him. You grew up in the 80s, you got a different set of memories associated with him. In the 90s, a different set of memories still, which speaks to the staying power, the drawing power, the ability to evolve the versatility of Terry Funk, the performer, the wrestler, in a way that very few honestly can match. When you think about Funk, like, it's always a joke, like, he wrestled forever. And he certainly did. And probably, arguably, in some respects, way too long. But how could you say no to Terry Funk, right? Like, when you think about professional wrestler, and you want to point to people that are trying to break into the business or introduce fans to what professional wrestling should be like, and you say, here's a professional wrestler, you'd point to Terry Funk as one of those guys that you hold up on kind of a golden pedestal that he freaking deserves. You know, Terry Funk is one of those all-time talents, and he always will be, in terms of the way that he can move people through a variety of different motions with very subtle or very big changes in his personality and presentation. He could make you happy. He could make you smile. He could make you laugh. He could annoy you. He could make you mad. He could make you furious. He could make you rage. He could make you do all of that. But most importantly of all, the one thing that he could do that so many people today in wrestling can't is he could make you believe. In a world of fake wrestling, Terry Funk 
could make you believe that the personal issue he had with somebody was actually personal. You thought this guy wanted to kill his opponent. You thought Terry Funk would do anything and everything to win because he would. You believed in his pain because at times he was in such pain. You believed that this was a crazy old son of a bitch that had no regard for his body because in a lot of ways, he was a crazy old son of a bitch that had no regard for his body. He could make you believe you believed in Terry Funk. You felt Terry Funk was real. You did. And you look at his career. It's just amazing. You know, this is a guy, you know, that came up in his dad, Dory Funk Sr.'s territory, wrestled with his brother, Dory Funk Jr., former NWA world champion, Terry Funk himself, back in the 70s former NWA world champion. He carried that strap for over a year. And what that symbolized back then, sure, there's a lot of maneuvering behind the scenes, backstage politicking and so forth that goes associated with it. But ultimately in those days, like the NWA champ was voted on. You know, they had to vote for who was going to be the champion that would go to all the territories and face the other territories' top guys. And Terry Funk got that vote and carried that strap for over a year. And this was in the 70s. You know, so this was when he was in his 30s. And you would think for a lot of guys, man, back in that area, you're the NWA world champion. It doesn't get any bigger or better than that. But that wasn't it for Terry. His career carried on into the 80s. You know what I mean? Like, he just kept going. He goes on to do, you know, great things in Japan. He goes on to that memorable run in Jim Crocker promotions and the NWA, then eventually WCW. You can talk about he had a couple of years where he made a stop in the WWF. He worked some time with Hogan. Like, you know, he had himself a nice career in the 80s. Like, if he just took his 80s career, you say, hey, you're kind of capping it off in 89, 90 with this program with Ric Flair that people still talk about to this day, the I Quit match that they still talk about to this day. You told a lot of wrestlers that that's your career arc. You got a decade and that's what you get out of it. They'd be like, sign me the hell up for that. That was Terry Funk. And most of the decade of the 80s, he was already in his damn 40s. Like he's wrestling Ric Flair in I Quit matches in his mid 40s. And then in the 90s, He's going and becoming and evolving again and becoming the king of hardcore. And he's doing all the death matches in Japan. And then he comes to this new company that really needs some help. It was getting its traction right, but it needed some real established star power. It needed a veteran presence. And that's what ECW got in Terry Funk. And it's one of those things you think about today. If a wrestling company was going to say, we're going to do our first ever pay-per-view and we're going to put the strap on a 53-year-old guy, you'd say, what the... Unless you remember AEW basically did that with Chris Jericho a few years ago. But in general, you would say, this is... You've been around for a couple of years, but this is your first ever offering on pay-per-view. You know, at a very hot time in the wrestling business... And you're putting a strap on a 53-year-old Terry Funk, and yet to this day, nobody questions that decision because it's absolutely the right thing to do because that's how much Terry Funk met the damn ECW. And he could go from doing the ECW stuff to coming to WWF and being fucking Chainsaw Charlie. You know, you think about the King of the Ring in 98 match where Foley's getting thrown off the top by The Undertaker, who's the first person down at ringside. It's Terry Funk. Like, this dude had a career that spanned generations. And, you know, I got the honor and privilege to be able to meet him, have some conversation with him in 2011 in Waterloo, Iowa, at the Trago Thez um, Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame weekend. That's part of the Dan Gable Museum there. And this autographed picture from Terry Funk to my buddy Jeff, stay out of trouble. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Like, this is from the Funker. And, you know, I put it up actually... And all the other memorabilia, sports memorabilia, wrestling memorabilia that I've got. 
he this picture actually goes up above my home office desk. Like when I'm at work, he's one of the pictures that I've got up there. He's such a nice and wonderful and kind guy. And you could see that in terms of the way he would give to people in the business, the way he was unselfish. And you see people posting matches, like a match that he had when he was in that top run in WCW in the late 80s, and he's given Eddie Guerrero all this shine when he doesn't fucking have to. That's the type of man that Terry Funk was. So it's really sad on the one hand to hear about his passing. It's really sad to think about the world going on without a star such as Terry Funk there, but it has been awesome to see so many people posting so many great and wonderful memories from the life and career of Terry Funk, and he deserves all of the acknowledgement. He deserves all of the acclaim and all of the praise and then some. Because again, when you think about wrestling legends, wrestling icons, all timers in the business, Terry Funk is one of them dudes.